Today you're going to learn all about pandas summary functions and different data frame attributes that you can access. Welcome back to video 3 of this introductory pandas series. My name's Nick and I teach Python and data science tutorials here and over on my website at datag.io. Let's get started. Last week, we covered off a number of different ways to select data, including the loc and iloc methods, as well as some simpler ways to make conditional statements using AND and OR operators. If you want to catch up on that material, check out the video here and down in the description below. Today you'll learn all about the different methods and attributes available within Pandas to help you describe your dataset, whether or not that means retrieving column names, or getting information about missing values, or what the dataset actually looks like, You'll learn it here. Stay tuned. Okay, let's get started with some code. To get an introduction of the data set, be sure to check out the other tutorials, which I'll link to right above. I'll quickly go over some of the preliminary code here. We've imported pandas and given it the alias PD, and then we've created a data frame called DF, which draws this particular data set, which we cover off in videos one and two of this series. With this piece here, we'll print out the first five rows of the data set. So we can see here that we have a number of different columns all related to different majors as well as the share of women belonging to each of the different major groups as well as the median salary within that. What we're going to learn today are the different methods and attributes that you can use on a data frame in order to be able to gain insight into the data frame. To start off we'll use the info method. The info, the info method returns basic information about the actual data set that will let you better be able to understand the distribution and makeup of that data. So let's write df info and then open and closing brackets. So what this returns here is a list of all of the different columns and the number of non-null values within the data set. It also provides information on the different data types available within the data set. Pandas uses a number of different data types. For example, pandas has a string data type which is assigned to the type object. The object data type can also contain different information. There's also integers as well as floats. Pandas data frames can also work with boolean values, date time values, time delta values which represent the difference between two date time values, as well as categorical values. Finally, the info method also provides you with information on the different data types and their and their frequency as well as the memory usage of the data frame. This is important because pandas loads everything in memory. The next method we'll cover off is the describe method. So let's write df.describe with an open and close parentheses. What this returns is for each of the numerical columns found within the data frame, it'll give you the count available within it, it'll give you the mean value, the standard deviation, the minimum and maximum values, as well as the different quartiles. This is really helpful in terms of giving you a brief understanding of what is actually contained within the data frame. What if you only wanted to know summary statistics of one column? You could do this by writing df and then the column name. And if you want to learn more about accessing these different columns, be sure to check out video two. We could write major code dot describe. And this returns the exact same values as found above, but only for the one column. This can be especially helpful when you're dealing with a very large data set where you have many different numerical columns and this becomes overbearing. Now what if you wanted to know more information about the actual values contained within these different data sets? So for example, if we wanted to know the distribution of values contained within the major category data set, in that case you could use the value counts function. We could write df major category dot value counts. When we run this, it prints out each of the unique values within this column, as well as the frequency by which these appear in. Now what if you were curious about the actual percentages in which these values appear in? You could use the exact same method here, but include normalize equals true. This returns the proportion with which each of the different major categories exists within the data set. Pandas also makes it really simple to get different values out of this. Using the describe function, you get a lot of different values printed out immediately, but say you were only interested in returning the mean. For example, if we wanted to return the mean value for the share of women across these different majors, you could write df 
share women dot mean. And just as above using the describe function, it returns the exact same mean available before. In the previous video, you learned all about how to select different pieces of data conditionally. For example, if you wanted to know the average share of women in the engineering major category, you could do this by writing df share women dot loc df major category equals engineering dot mean. And this returns only for the values where the major category is engineering, the mean share of women across those majors. Another item you might be interested in retrieving is the unique values contained within a different within a column in a pandas data frame. For example, if you wanted to know the unique values contained within the major category column, you could write df major category dot unique. And this then prints out an array of all the unique values within this. Note here that this looks like a list, but it isn't actually a list. If you wanted to return this as a list, you could use the toList method here. This then creates a list available for you. You can also assign this to a unique category, for example, unique major categories equals, and then this stores the list of all of the unique categories found within the major category column. Sometimes you might want to gain information on the different columns within your data set. This can be easily accessed using the columns attribute. So if you write df columns, it returns all of the different columns contained within the data set. Pandas also makes it very easy to identify null values within your data set. What we noticed above using the info method was that there were no null values. So let's quickly insert some. I'm going to import numpy as np, and then I'm going to assign some of the values to contain null values. So all I'm doing here is assigning five of the different values in the third column to be nulls. So we can make sure that this actually worked by running the info method again. You can see here that five of the different values have become null values. This is a little bit confusing because it tells you how many values are not null. This can be particularly difficult if you're working with large data sets that have more than 76 values where calculating the difference between 76 and 71 becomes more complicated. If you want to know per column how many null values exist, you can use the isNull method. What this does is that it returns a Boolean array of all of the different uh, values contained within your data set and checks whether or not they're null values or not. So anything that's marked as false isn't a null value, but anything that is a null value will be marked as true. If we chain this with the sum function and add up any null values here, then we would be able to figure out how many null values exist within our data frame columns. A true would equal one and a false would equal zero, so all of the false values wouldn't be added up. When we print this out, we can see that all of these columns here don't have any uh, null values contained within them, but the major category does. So we can see very clearly that we have five null values within that category. Another really helpful way of visualizing your data is to be able to figure out the actual length of your data frame. If you wanted to figure out how long an entire data frame is, meaning how many rows are contained within it, you could use the len function. So if you write len df, it would tell you that your data frame is 76 records long. Similarly, if you're simply interested in understanding how many records long a particular data frame column was, you could write len df and then your column name. And again, this returns 76. Okay, so you've learned quite a bit in today's video, but I wanna give you an extra challenge. How would you figure out the percentage of values in each column that are null? Let me know in the comments how you would do this. Today you learned all about how to describe your data frame and get information using different methods and attributes made available in Pandas. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, be sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of other videos just like this one, subscribe and click the little bell icon to be notified. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day!